service on this beautiful day, September 5th. Our theme today is called Outside Our Boundaries. And maybe I can say a lot of us are feeling that we are in fact called outside of our boundaries with so much happening in the world today. But as I read this call to worship, I want you to think upon the words it is adapted from Psalm 125, verse 1 through 2, 5b. Those who trust in the Lord are like mountains which cannot be moved but abide forever. As a mountain surround a valley, so the Lord surrounds his people. From this time on and forevermore, peace be upon God's people. Please bow with me. Gracious one, we listen for your still small voice. We watch the world and see many concerns. You are calling us outside our normal comforts. You are asking our hearts to open more and more. Help us, Lord, to be willing to move when you stir our souls. Help us to share your love through our words and actions. Continue your guidance among your people, I pray. Amen. I'm lighting the peace candle.
Our invitation to the prayer for peace comes from Doctrine and Covenants 162, Section 4a. Listen carefully to the many testimonies of those around the world who have been led into the fellowship of the community of Christ. The richness of cultures, the poetry of language, and the breadth of human experience permit the gospel to be seen with new eyes and grasped with freshness of spirit. That gift has been given to you. Do not fail to understand its power. Let's pray. Dear God, sometimes it is so easy to accept the way things are, even when the status quo includes conflict between people and war among nations. Yet you call us to move beyond the barriers that separate and work for peace and peaceful reconciliation of conflicts. Bless us with anticipation so that we are willing to do the hard work of peacemaking. Lead us to new pathways of the peace of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Sometimes we wait expecting God to feed the hungry from above, but bread is baked each day and shared by people who are moved by Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture consists of two events of healing and restoration. Jesus has left his Jewish countryside and crossed the border into Gentile territory. In a strange land to him, he has an account with a woman that has heard of him and comes to seek help for her daughter. I'd like to share the scriptures and then some thoughts that I have read and, and garnished as I studied on them. From Mark 7, chap, or chapter 7, uh, 24 to 30. He set out and away, went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, immediately heard of him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of his daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, 
for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying in bed, and the demon gone. Her response to Jesus' comment indicates her great faith and belief that he really could heal her daughter. We may be shocked by Jesus' harsh response to the woman's plea for help. We're sometimes uncomfortable with a lack of compassion being shown. Prior to this time, Jesus had understood his mission to be a mission to his own Jewish people. But now he had crossed the border. His response to her reply indicates a change of direction in his thoughts and in his actions. Jesus sensed a new understanding of his mission now in a foreign country. Following the stay of Jesus entire, he travels through Sidon to the Sea of Gath. So verses 31 to 36 of Mark 7. He returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Discopolis. They bought, brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on them. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his finger into his ear, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ifataha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. From the earlier encounter, Jesus had been open to himself with new understanding and is now prepared to open the ears of the deaf man. There's more to this encounter than just simply the restoring of hearing and speech. In the first century, physical ability was often viewed as a sin. They did not have the biological knowledge and understanding that we have today. Disabled people at that time were excluded from social and religious institutions. They were excluded from community. By opening the ears of the deaf man, Jesus restores the man's relationship with his community. The change the man goes is far beyond just his new ability to hear and speak, it allows him to become accepted in social and in religious meetings. So I say to you, have you ever been a foreigner or been somewhat out of your own comfort zone? Maybe it's on some travel or trip where you felt just uncomfortable. What about the Afghans right now that we've just talked about earlier? What is their comfort zone as they enter a new region of the world? Have you ever been so focused on a task that you miss the opportunity to build relationships and healing that's right there in front of you? I know sometimes when I'm mowing, mowing I get extremely focused on what I'm doing and I lose track of anything else that's going on around me. What can you do this week to show friendship, love, and concern to someone who is in need? Hymn 581, I think, says this. I'm going to live so God can use me anytime and anywhere. As I read through several stories of Jesus' healing, I began to see more clearly 
that he healed not only the ailment, but he healed the relationship that that person had with the community. Christ's ministry was with mission. I would invite you to consider three things. First, engaging in Christ's mission to, may call us out of our comfort zone and beyond that. Second, mission really is relational. God wishes to heal in ways that restores us to community. And third, be open to God's movement in your life as you strive to effectively minister to others. Remember your mission as you live your life. Today, we partake of the communion. We eat bread. We drink wine in remembrance of him. It is our opportunity to refocus and renew our commitment to Christ. Communion really is an outward experience of an inner promise we've made. The communion reaffirms Christ's promise to be with you in every step that you take. As I was thinking of this, the story of footprints in the sand came to my mind. I know that's familiar to many of you. Recall how there's two sets of footprints going down the beach when suddenly there's only one set. The two sets became one because he carried you. In today's Daily Bread, I thought there were some very interesting comments and, and that related to this, and I'd like to share some thoughts from that also. As we live our mission initiatives, we are transformed. We discover our welfare in the welfare of others. Our capacity to be people of grace is transformed into generosity. Our mindful honoring of worth in the life of the other has a ripple effect. Crossing boundaries enables diversity to be revealed in all its grandness. We receive the blessings of others who previously invisible lives now flourish. This day is a catalyst of transformation. Our generous and perhaps sacrificial gift changes our awareness, heals our cultural indifference, and creates pathways for the vulnerable to become whole and for the reciprocal blessing to emerge for the common good of all of us. If ever peace has a starting point, it begins in our response of grace and generosity. We are called outside our boundaries to enter the lives of others. Only then, with abundant miracles, will happen that bless the welfare of all. May we be willing to leave our comfort zone as we are called to mission, to invite people to Christ, to abolish poverty and suffering, to develop disciples to serve, to experience congregations and mission, to pursue peace on earth. Hymn 577 and 580, I think, share deeply with this thing, and I would like to leave us today with these thoughts. Called by Christ to love each other. Called by Christ to seek the lost. May we seek as sister, brother, and, a, and follow Christ, not counting cost. One in daring, one in sharing, follow Christ not counting cost. Called by Christ to be a witness. Called by Christ for this, our day. In Christ's think, strength, we have our witness. 
work to do, and words to say. On Christ leaning, find life's meaning, work to do, and words to say. Called by Christ to be each earth's leaven. Called by Christ to shed God's light. May we bring a view of heaven to the world's despairing plight. Christ revealing wondrous healing to this world's despairing plight. Called by Christ as friends and learners. Called by Christ for peace on earth. In this world, as Christ's sojourners, we receive new power and new birth. As we're praising how amazing, we receive new power, new birth. What does the Lord require? of you to seek justice to love kindness and to walk humbly with your god may peace be with you all amen welcome the poe family
That was a beautiful meditative moment. And in the spirit of that moment, I'd like you to fix your mind's eye on Christ. I'd like you to tune your heart to the spirit as I read the combined prayer on the bread and wine. Please bow with me. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who receive them, that they may eat and drink in the remembrance of the body and blood of your son and be witness to you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your son and always remember him and keep the commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Our theme today is called Outside Our Boundaries. It means outside of Prairie Village and the Kansas City area. We have one organization in the church called Outreach International that most people are familiar with, which deals with poverty in various regions such as the Philippines, Zambia, Nicaragua. And they do things like loan money to grow rice and help communities to dig wells so they can have fresh water or build latrines so they can have better sanitation. Our congregation helps a nurse in the Honduras to help people there. And then we have problems like earthquakes and hurricanes in Haiti. Uh, they had a large explosion in Lebanon last year, which is still affecting that country. We have the Afghans who are trying to get out of Afghanistan or have, have gotten out who need help. And then, of course, we have COVID in the U.S. all over. Um, one in three Americans live in a county that has been hit by weather disasters in the last three months. We've had floods in the south and east coast from Hurricane Ida. We have fires in the west and also in places like Europe. There's, of course, unemployment and poverty, uh, the unemployment benefits. And this week for many and racial discrimination, both Europe and U.S., as well as the Uyghurs in China. And then I read that the Uyghurs in Afghanistan are also worried because the Taliban take over. And there's strife in many places, just to name a few of the many problems. So if you'll pray with me, Lord, we pray that you will use our funds that are donated to help all those outside our boundaries who need the help and assistance that these funds can give them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
section, I would like to um, follow suit with the hymnal reading of Gather Your Children for the Benediction. So please bow your heads as I read these words. Gather your children, dear Savior, in peace, and draw us to you with your passionate plea. They'll seek us and call us to come and be blessed, to find in your arms, Lord, safety, comfort, and rest. Knowing you, loving you, naming you, Lord, we cluster around you and grow by your word. One day to remember these moments so rare of caring and closeness just because you are there. Love be our banner, forgiveness our theme, compassion our nature, your vision our dream. Who knows what the Spirit of God yet can do, what joy may be tasted or what promises come true. Host at our table in our house and yours, here bind us together with love that endures. Like parents, like children, let this be our fame, that blessed we bless many to the praise of your name. Amen. Thank you everyone who participated in the service and it's so beautiful to see everyone's faces.